So good morning, everybody, uh, Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, let me uh, express my thanks to organizers to uh, invite me for uh, such a great uh, symposium, and especially uh, when taking into account that I can speak about this topic, uh, which is uh, uh, very attractive for me uh, based on uh, my, my scientific focus. Um, so everybody knows that uh, biological effects of bile acids are known for, for ages. Uh, but uh, only the last decade uh, has brought increasing evidence that bile acids can exert also other metabolic effects other than classical detergent effects on, on, on lipids in the digestive system. And this was reflected um, also by, by medical and scientific uh, associations and communities. And um, as you may see on this slide, uh, the whole symposia uh, were um, dedicated to this topic. On this slide, I would like to summarize what we know about biological effects of, of, of bile acids. Uh, we can subdivide them onto the effects uh, uh, on different levels. On the level of the whole organism, uh, bile acids uh, uh, are responsible for elimination or homeostasis of cholesterol. Uh, on the level of the liver cell, uh, they are responsible for choleretic effects. Um, we call it bile acid dependent bile flow. Uh, those effects which are uh, uh, in blue color are those which are classical. Those effects which are in red color are those which are novel or uh, emerging effects during the last uh, years. And as you may see, there are effects of bile acids uh, which are uh, related to liver regeneration. They can regulate uh, gene expressions via nuclear receptors acting as real endocrine molecules. And they obviously have uh, effect on, on intermediary metabolism of of uh, macronutrients such as, such as uh, mostly lipids and, and, uh, and saccharides. Uh, on the level of the biliary tract, they have um, uh, effect on cholesterol and xenobiotics uh, solubilization. They have uh, antimicrobial effects. They can stimulate bicarbonate secretion by cholangiocytes. As you know, uh, there are um, studies uh, with urso, uh, with uh, nor urso and bisnor urso deoxycholic acid um, uh, for, for primary sclerosing cholangitis. Uh, there are also mitogenic effects on cholangiocytes. Uh, on the level of the small intestine, they are responsible for solubilization of dietary lipids. They again have antimicrobial effects. Uh, they regulate gene expression, again, via nuclear receptors in yellow sites. Uh, they are responsible for FGF19 secretion, which is a factor regulating bile acid synthesis uh, in the liver. Uh, they are responsible for uh, glucagon-like peptide 1 production via TGR5 receptor uh, in the intestine. And on the level of the large intestine, they modulate electrolyte secretion, uh, however, they can even have uh, deleterious or harmful effects. Um, we well know uh, that uh, people with low LDL cholesterol levels have uh, low risk of atherosclerosis, but these people have higher biliary secretion of bile acids. They have higher production of secondary bile acids in the, in the gut lumen, and these people have higher risk of colon cancer. Um, they also have higher risk of other diseases, such as cholesterol, gallstone disease, and, and some others. And uh, bile acids can also act on, uh, on the level of the brown adipose uh, tissue. Um, they can stimulate thermogenesis uh, via uh, thyroid hormone uh, receptors uh, and uh, TGR5 again. So this is a picture showing um, how bile acids can act uh, within the intestinal lumen. And as you may see, um, this is uh, intestinal uh, villus. And uh, here you can see two cells, uh, which are uh, enterocyte. Uh, this uh, cell uh, is equipped with ACA ASBT receptor, or ill bile acid transporter. 
responsible for uh, transport of conjugated bile acids from the gut lumen um, uh, into the interior of the cell. And as you may see, uh, bile acids can stimulate uh, FXR, nuclear receptor, uh, the second uh, population of the cells uh, in this compartment is, is enteroendocrine L cell, which is equipped with uh, this receptor. Uh, I mentioned that it's a TGR5 receptor, uh, which uh, um, using a little bit complicated pathway leads to secretion of glucagon-like peptide 1. Um, on this picture, you can see uh, what are uh, the metabolic effects uh, of bile acids and which organs and tissues uh, are the targets uh, for bile acids. And uh, uh, I've already mentioned intestine and also, also liver tissue. In these, in these squares, you can see uh, all the uh, receptors, most of them are nuclear receptors, which are responsible for, uh, for providing uh, uh, for exerting the effects of bile acids. And uh, as you may see, um, uh, these receptors are ubiquitous. They are general, uh, generally uh, distributed within the whole organism. And uh, we have these uh, um, receptors uh, in the cardiovascular system. I will, I will uh, mention it in, in my further slides in more detail. They are also in thyroid gland, I also mentioned that in adipose tissue, in pancreas, and also in some other, uh, other organs which are not related to this topic. So how uh, bile acids can act as metabolic uh, regulators. So they can really influence, they can really affect the metabolism of lipids, glucose, and uh, uh, by this uh, regulate energy homeostasis. You may see all these receptors, uh, again, I, I want to emphasize that, that uh, uh, by knowing that bile acids act uh, via these receptors, they act really as, as hormones, as endocrine molecules. And uh, here again, you can see um, many target tissue, many target organs uh, which are um, influenced by bile acids. Um, this is a cardiovascular system. And uh, uh, let's uh, look at how bile acids can, can act on, on cardiovascular system. So uh, they can uh, influence cardiomyocyte. They can uh, affect uh, the functions of vascular endothelial cells, also vascular smooth muscle cells, and also macrophages. And um, uh, let's have a look uh, uh, on the cardiomyocyte. Uh, bile acids can influence uh, 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 ionic uh, transport. They can influence uh, TGR5. Look that this receptor is also present uh, at cardiomyocyte uh, cell membrane. They can uh, influence FXR. Again, FXR is uh, present in cardiomyocyte. They can uh, influence muscarinic receptors, uh, rather surprising uh, um, fact. They can also uh, influence adrenergic um, uh, receptors, such as uh, uh, beta adrenergic receptors. Uh, and uh, all this is, uh, is summarized in this nice uh, review paper. Um, look at this, uh, how uh, bile acids can, can act as muscarinic receptors uh, modulators. Um, as you may see here, uh, there is, a, there is a, a molecular mimicry, molecular similarity between acetylcholine and um, uh, lithocholic uh, uh, acid conjugated with taurine, and uh, this is believed to be the reason why these um, uh, molecules uh, can act uh, on the same receptor. Uh, what we know from the, from the clinical medicine, what is the clinical evidence? We know that, that uh, patients with uh, cardiovascular diseases have low bile acid secretion, um, uh, as described uh, in, in several papers uh, by these Israel, um, Israel authors. Uh, bile acids can also affect individual heterogenic factors. Uh, they can affect this lipidemia acting via FXR uh, modulation in the liver tissue. Uh, they can also influence inflammation acting via uh, TGR5 uh, modulation on the level of macrophages. 
uh, they can inhibit, they can even inhibit platelet activation uh, and aggregation by, by FXR modulation. Um, so uh, it seems that bile acids can really, I mean the metabolism of bile acids can really be a, a therapeutic uh, target uh, or um, um, a novel uh, therapeutic approach for these diseases. And uh, here I summarize uh, how bile acid metabolism could be influenced using either bile acids uh, per se uh, or bile acid sequestrants. We know how cholesterol can influence uh, uh, many, uh, many metabolic parameters. We can even use these uh, more sophisticated uh, drugs such as intestinal bile acid reuptake inhibitors. Um, even so old drug uh, such as metformin uh, can act as a bile acid uh, uh, metabolism modulator. We know that, that even metformin is capable of, of inducing GLP-1 secretion. It also uh, uh, influences reabsorption of conjugated bile acid in the, in the ileum. We also know that some natural products exert uh, some bile acid modulating activities. Uh, uh, of course, probiotics is a big topic, um, uh, especially those probiotics capable of, of uh, uh, modulating bile acid met metabolism within the intestinal lumen. Uh, obviously, we have on the market uh, first the synthetic bile acid mimetics, and um, it was also mentioned in, in the previous talks that uh, there are some, some other drugs such as, for example, uh, Aramhol, which is a, a fatty acid, bile acid conjugate, uh, which is also used for treat, uh, treatment of NASH. Um, so this is just a picture showing how, how the, the scaffolds, sterile scaffold of bile acids can be used um, as, a, as a tool to develop novel, novel drugs uh, to modulate uh, all these nuclear receptors uh, with the aim to, to treat metabolic diseases. Um, this is an example of how natural uh, products can influence uh, nuclear receptors responsible for these metabolic effects. This is oleanolic acid uh, from, the, from the olive tree leaves. And as you may see, uh, there are um, real scientific data showing that these uh, products can really have metabolic effects. And th the same is true also for this acid, acid which is called betulinic acid, um, coming from the birch tree bark. And again, we have uh, uh, um, research data showing that uh, this natural product can have a real, uh, real effect on modulating metabolic diseases. So because uh, the only widely used uh, bile acid uh, modulator or bile acid uh, per se is uh, orthodoxicolic acid. The question is whether uh, this acid can be heteroprotective. Uh, so um, there is a, a pile of evidence. Uh, some of uh, this evidence come from the um, uh, preclinical animal studies. Uh, some of them are from, uh, from the clinical st studies, from clinical trials. We know that, uh, that uh, UDC has anti-arrhythmogenic effect. It, this is based on ex vivo study, but we also know um, that uh, um, that also can be uh, successfully used to treat uh, intrahepatic cholestasis of pregnancy, um, having um, anti-arrhythmogenic effect as well. Uh, it can prevent ischemic reperfusion injury based on this animal study. It can even protect from cardiac rejection in transplant settings, uh, again, animal study. It can improve peripheral blood flow in heart failure patients. So a few examples uh, how UDCA, uh, knowing and uh, uh, taking into account the fact that UDCA is not a good uh, modulator of FXR and TGR5, it's still uh, was proved to have uh, to have effect uh, effects on on um, uh, glucose metabolism, uh, as can be seen here in these uh, animal studies. Um, this is a, a clinical study showing that patients with NASH taking uh, UDCA can uh, uh, benefit from this treatment, having uh, a smaller intimomedial thickness compared to those not treated with UDCA. 
having direct anti-heterogenic effect, of course. And uh, surprisingly, UDCA can even see, uh, stimulate secretion of incretins. Um, again, uh, uh, knowing that, uh, that UDCA is not TGR5 uh, good agonist. And this is also an important paper showing that ERSA can be, can be chemically modified to improve uh, their uh, capabilities towards activation of, of some of these metabolic receptors. Uh, so we also know that, uh, that hepatic enzymes are good independent markers of cardiovascular diseases. And in contrast with early beliefs that liver disease are not usually associated with cardiovascular diseases, we know from the recent epidemiological trials that uh, um, persons with elevations of ALT and or GGT, gamma glutamate transferase, have increased cardiovascular diseases. Um, and uh, it's not uh, true only for ALT, but also for GGT. And uh, uh, what is important to, to emphasize is the fact that the prevalence of LFT uh, elevations, elevations of liver function tests in general populations reach as high as number of uh, 10 to 10, 10 to 20%. Um, it's also important to mention this old study published in Journal of Hepatology showing that ERSO can uh, decrease, uh, decrease activities of uh, gamma uh, GT and uh, amino transferases um, without um, uh, any huge effect on other parameters. But this indicates that uh, this drug could also uh, improve cardiovascular and overall morbidity and mortality, probably, but we are still waiting for, for further studies. Uh, there are a few examples of studies in which uh, effects of UDCA on uh, liver function test activities uh, decrease was, was uh, documented, but there are many, many others. So to conclude, uh, I'd like to, to summarize that there are no doubts about systemic effects of bile acids involving direct action on cardiovascular system, having important impact on metabolism of energy sources, on pathogenesis of obesity, diabetes, and other metabolic and hormonal diseases. And despite uh, representing a promising therapeutic tar target, we are still at the beginning of our understanding how to use bile acids as possible therapeutics for cardiovascular diseases. Thank you for your attention.